Yes, guys, welcome back to 11 Yanks Breakdown, where we discuss all things U.S. men's national team. I'm Pete Douthat, and today we are talking about the U.S.'s December friendly with El Salvador. Just to be clear, this friendly was confirmed by the El Salvador Federation. It's supposed to be on December 9th. Greg Berhalter said that there would be a December camp with a friendly, but U.S. soccer has not officially confirmed this friendly as of the taping of this video. It might be now by the time this video is released. I don't know. So just wanted to clarify that. Now, last month, we got a great look at some of our European-based players who play in Europe. We played Wales. We played Panama. We did well. And the future looks very, very bright. Now, this game with El Salvador would be largely MLS-based players. Now, there might be a section of USMNT fans who look at this and they go, you know what? Our best players are playing in Europe. This game is going to be mostly MLS players. It's not that interesting. It's not that exciting. A lot of these guys shouldn't even be playing for the national team. Why should I pay attention? Look, I get it, guys. Our best players are playing for the top clubs in the world, and that is fantastic. But I'm here to give you three good reasons why you need to pay attention to this game. Okay, so the three reasons. Number one, 2021. In 2021, the U.S. has more tournaments and games than ever. We've got the Nations League, we've got the Gold Cup, we've got World Cup qualifying, we've got the Olympics, and we've got the U-20 World Cup. So a lot of the guys that are going to be on this roster aren't just our first 11 or first 23. A lot of them are guys that are auditioning for the U23s or the U20s or maybe a Gold Cup roster. And it is important for us to look at that depth. Jason Christ, the under 23 coach, is probably going to be involved with Greg Burhalter in this December camp as well, looking at guys and they're still trying to figure out who gets placed where next year. To be clear, number one is World Cup qualifying. Our best players, our best squad are going to be in the World Cup qualifying. Burhalter has already confirmed that. But there are several tiers here that we have to go through and see where guys slot in. Number two, MLS is changing. In the past, we saw guys like Christian Pulisic or Weston McKinney or Josh Sargent or Uli Yanez leave the U.S. and go sign with European clubs before ever signing an MLS contract. There's several reasons for that. One, MLS wasn't giving a lot of playing time to its young players. Two, MLS wasn't being willing to sell players for good prices when European teams came in with offers. So for a lot of young players, it wasn't worth the risk to sign an MLS contract and then get stuck here for four or five years. Now, however, MLS is not only giving more playing time to young players than ever, it's also starting to sell them off. We saw this with Brendan Aronson, Tyler Adams, Reggie Cannon, Joe Scally, and others. So in the future, a lot of the American guys playing in Europe are guys that are going to come through MLS academies, sign contracts with MLS, spend two to three years here, and then get sold for a good fee. So MLS still has a massive, massive role to play in the U.S. men's national team and the development of U.S. men's national team players. Number three, there is still value in MLS. There are still guys in MLS that should be on the first 11 or first 18 of the U.S. MNT. Aaron Long is probably still John Brooks' partner at the center of defense, especially after Matt Miazga's terrible showing in these last two friendlies. Jordan Morris might be one of the first guys off the bench if we need a goal. Sam Vines could come into the conversation as a backup left back at least. Matt Turner could be a very capable number two and even challenge Zach Steffen for minutes in the future. Both Daryl DK and Io Akinola have done enough to put themselves in the forward depth conversation this year. My point is there are still lots of guys in MLS that have something to offer to this U.S. men's national team, so we shouldn't just rule out all MLS players. I've always said that MLS guys playing for the national team should be one of two things, either playing at a DP level for their clubs, or they should be under 21 years old and still developing. Now, of course, there are exceptions to that rule, but I'm going to break down who I think should be involved in this December camp. Remember, I'm not necessarily picking the guys who are the best, but the guys who need to be looked at to find out where they slot in next year. Now, this roster was complicated to put together because we still have the MLS playoffs going on. And if this friendly goes forward on December 9th, it will be right in between the MLS Cup semifinals and MLS Cup. So there is probably four different teams whose players won't be involved with this camp. Now, I have no way of knowing who's going to progress all the way to the semifinals and to the finals. So it was very hard for me to create a roster based on who I thought that was going to be. So what I did was I created a roster based on everybody being available. And then I provided alternates who I think could come in if one of those guys was not in camp due to their club commitments with MLS. All right, let's get into it. Matt Turner, Sean Johnson, and Stefan Fry are the goalkeepers. Matt Turner is the guy that I think should start this game against El Salvador. He's been very impressive the last year or two. He's not as good with his feet as maybe Burhalter would want, but I do think he deserves a look. He's an excellent shot stopper. Sean Johnson is generally pretty reliable, has the potential to make some mistakes, but should be involved with this roster. 
Stefan Fry, I really like. He has probably been one of the best goalkeepers in MLS over the last six or seven years. And the fact that he hasn't got a cap yet when he got his citizenship two years ago is kind of embarrassing. He's still 34 and I think he deserves a look in camp. I think he should be involved. I definitely prefer him over a 36 year old Brad Guzan. Now, if any of those guys aren't available, there's Bill Hamid and Brad Guzan. I've said before, I don't think Brad Guzan should be anywhere near the US men's national team, but as an alternate to an MLS roster, I understand it. Bill Hamid, I don't rate very highly either, but we don't have a lot of other options. Maybe David Ochoa from Real Salt Lake could be somebody that comes in. I don't know, but these are the alternates I went with. Fullbacks, we have Julian Araujo, Sam Vines, Jalen Lindsay, and George Bello. Araujo has really come into his own this year with the LA Galaxy, and Mexico has definitely been sniffing around. I think we should call him up, give him that starting spot at right back for this game, and see how he does. Sam Vines did real well when we played Costa Rica back in January. He's someone that could challenge for minutes at left back. Jalen Lindsay has quietly had a really good season with Sporting KC, and I would like to see him involved with this. George Bello didn't start the season very well for Atlanta United, but he grew into the season and started getting better and better defensively. I don't know what he's gonna look like long-term, but I would at least like to bring him into this camp and see how he does. He's still just 18 years old. He could be involved with the under 23s, the under 20s, Gold Cup, definitely worth looking at. For alternates, Kyle Duncan is a solid option if Jalen Lindsay is not available. Jonathan Gomez, I've talked about before. I think he has a very high ceiling and I wouldn't mind seeing him in this camp just to see what he has to offer. Center backs, and this is where it gets fun. Aaron Long should continue to have the opportunity to prove that he is John Brooks's partner at center back. Now, Aaron Long is tough because he isn't great with his feet, and toward the beginning of the year, he wasn't very good with New York Red Bull. But the reality is that nobody in the pool has really said, I'm John Brooks's center back partner. I should be the guy. Matt Miazga had that chance in the November roster. He didn't take it. Mark McKenzie is another high ceiling center back, still 21 years old. He didn't win Defender of the Year, but he was a close second to Walker Zimmerman. I really like Mark. He's very good at playing with both feet as well. At the very least, I think McKenzie should be auditioning to take Tim Ream's backup spot at that left center back role. But he's also good enough that I think he could compete for that right center back spot with Chris Richards and Aaron Long. Miles Robinson didn't have the best season for Atlanta United, but he's still 23 and could be involved with the U23s. Abubakar Keita is another guy who's not starting for the crew, but we don't have a lot of U23 center backs, so I think he should be involved. Alternates are Walker Zimmerman and Antonio Leone. Now I know Walker Zimmerman won MLS Defender of the Year, but you have to look at where he was playing. Nashville was a very defensive team. So very often they were defending very, very well in a block and it wasn't exactly Walker Zimmerman on an island defending 1v1. When he played for LAFC and I've seen him many times for them, he gets caught out because of his pace. He's a big towering center back, but he's not great with his feet and he's not very quick. So if we're gonna play a possession game with a high line, Walker Zimmerman is generally going to be a liability. I don't think he should be involved with the USMNT, but maybe as a Gold Cup selection, I wouldn't mind him being an alternate. Antonio Leone is just 16 years old, but a super high ceiling. Mexico are very interested in him. He still hasn't made his decision yet about who he's gonna represent. So why not call him into camp? He could be involved with our U20 World Cup next summer. So that's a good alternate option for me. Midfielders, I took Jackson Yule and Gianluca Busio at the six. Busio has been a revelation since he switched positions for KC and can play a lot of spots in that midfield. Sebastian Legette provides experience and quality in the squad. I know he was in the November squad, but I think he's a guy that could be a good leader in this group. He can play as an eight or as a 10. Cole Bassett does not get enough love, guys. He has one of the best scoring and assisting records per minute of midfielders in MLS this season, and he's still just 19. Brendan Aronson, I don't need to say anything about. He can play as a 10. He can also play as an eight. Caden Clark, at just 17 years old, went from USL to not only playing, but performing well for the New York Red Bulls. He had another great goal the other day for the Red Bulls in the playoffs, even though they were eliminated. And I think he's got a very high ceiling. There's rumors about him being at Leipzig. He definitely factors into our U20 squad at the very least. Alternates include Tanner Tessman for Dallas, a great six who can also play as an eight. He's strong, he's physical, he's improved his passing and his understanding of the game this season. Moses Nyman is still very, very young, but he could factor into our U20, so I wouldn't mind seeing him. He plays more of a 10 attacking role, very technical, very skillful, offers something different than what we have in the squad already. Forward line, so this includes wide forwards and center forwards. Jossi Zardes will probably be involved, but the guys I'm very excited about are Daryl DK and Io Aknola. 
Both of these guys are duo nationals. DK could play for Nigeria. Akinola could play for Nigeria and Canada. I think we should call both of them in. They've had good seasons for their respective clubs. I've been particularly impressed by Daryl DK and I want him to be with the US. Chris Mueller has been top notch for Orlando City. Jordan Morris gets a lot of hate, but I have been very impressed with his rate of improvement over his few years in MLS. The general accepted truth is that players tend to stagnate in MLS. I'm not saying that's not true, but Jordan Morris has demonstrated that he can improve year upon year in MLS and he continues to be a leader. He's got experience, he's got pace, he's improved his left foot, he's improved his combination play. He absolutely deserves to start this game. I think he still needs to be with the 23-man USMNT squad if everybody's fit. Paul Ariola is another depth guy. He doesn't have a very high ceiling, but he's a hard worker and he understands the system and he could be involved with the Gold Cup next year. He understands what Greg Berhalter is trying to do, so I have him with this squad for that reason. Some alternates with this squad include Jeremy Ebubise and Ricardo Pepe. Ricardo Pepe didn't have a great season, but he's still just 17. He scored three or four goals for Dallas, played well in the playoff game last week. Jeremy Ebubise has had a good season. I, I don't really think he has a very high ceiling, but I wouldn't mind him being an alternate in this squad, maybe with the Olympics, maybe with the Gold Cup. Okay, so that's my roster for the December 9th El Salvador friendly. Let me know who you guys like in the comments. Who do you think deserves to be in this roster? Who should start? Who should be involved? I will respond. You guys have a great week and I will see you next Tuesday.